I'm Bernina expert Amanda Murphy, and I'd like to show you tips and tricks for quilting my shadow play quilt. It's part of my new booklet, The Cotton Shot Collective. The Cotton Shot Collective has patterns for five quilts plus three smaller projects, and shadow play is one. There are different color options, and you can find SKUs for those options on my downloads page on my blog. To quilt shadow play on a sit-down machine, I would recommend basting around the entire quilt in the binding area and then quilting the lines between the blocks, both horizontally and vertically, as you can see here. And the idea with the design of this quilt is that there are applique ovals in some of the blocks, but then in the empty blocks, there's shadow ovals or quilted ovals. I use my oval rulers to do this, but first I quilted all the lines between the blocks. That let me take out a lot of the pins. Of course, if you're on a long arm, you would work row by row from the top to the bottom of the quilt. All the ovals are designed to match with the quilted ovals that my oval rulers produce. And here, I'm quilting the inside of the oval. Then I end my thread and use my every angle ruler to quilt the straight lines of that center strip. I use the edge of the oval just to work my array around to the other side of the strip. Then I switch back to the every angle ruler and I quilt up the other side of the strip. Now I've speeded this footage up a little bit so you don't have to wait and watch me, but now I'm going around the outer oval. And if I need to adjust my ruler as I go, I take the time to do that. Remember, all my blocks are already secured because I did those horizontal and vertical lines right off the top. I'm using a thread that matches the background and you can barely notice it at the top and bottom of the oval. And I'm quilting just outside of the oval so I don't interfere with my beautiful 28 weight applique threads. Since I was stitching around the outside of the oval, I can just switch to the every angle ruler and quilt the rest of the strip. I made the lines that I quilted in the background of each block a half an inch apart. So I used my oval ruler to travel little ways around that oval and then I use the lines on my every angle ruler to gauge that half inch space. And I quilted back and forth until I reached the oval. Then I quilted to the other side. I need to go a little further here and then I extended that line on the other side of the oval. Now I'm doing the little lines that fill in that space. And quilting down the strip again. I want to continue to quilt lines that are half an inch apart. So I travel along the edge of the quilt to get to my next line. And of course, in real time, I'm quilting much slower than I am here. I've turned the quilt so you can see this a little better. So I'm using those lines on the ruler to quilt lines that are a half an inch apart. My thread matches the background. It's maybe a shade lighter. I like a little contrast with the thread, but not too much, nothing that would overpower the piecing. I'm using the lines on the ruler to gauge that half inch space. And now it's time to quilt the other side. I'm using the oval ruler to go around the oval. I need to go a little back, and then I continue my line. And I go and fill in the space. So I do one side, and then the other side. And then I'm done with the block. Now, if my oval was a little bigger than the one shown here, I might also have to do some half inch lines on the inside of the oval, and that's fine, I take the time to do that. But this is one of the ovals on the outer edge of the quilt, so it's one of the smaller ovals. All the ovals, though, are the same size as the ovals 
that will be generated by using my every oval ruler for good measure. They're all a two to one ratio. So if they're 10 inches in height, they're five inches wide, or, or rather they quilt a five inch by 10 inch oval. Let's quickly take a look at a block that doesn't have an applique oval. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose the size of oval I'd like, and I'm going to quilt that oval outline just like there was an applique in that space. I'm going to end my thread because I was using the internal portion of the oval. I'm going to switch to my every angle ruler and just like I did with the applique, I'm gonna quilt along the strip within that inner oval. So of course my ruler is nowhere near the foot when I begin and I bring it over once the foot is down. I quilt down the strip and I can use the oval ruler to travel across, I can just free motion across. It doesn't have to be an exact match with the ruler when you travel across. Then I quilt up and as I said, if it was a bigger oval, I'd quilt lines half an inch out on either side, but this is pretty small. I put the bigger ovals in the center of the quilt and the smaller ovals toward the outside. Okay, so this is going to be my outer oval shape. I gauge it by looking at an applique that's about the same shape. and I quilt all the way around my oval. And the nice thing here is if you move your ruler a little bit, no one will be the wiser because there is no applique that you're quilting along. You could also digitize ovals and use a program like Art & Stitch to do that if you were on a long arm with automation. Now I switch to my every angle ruler and I quilt the rest of the strip and then I quilt lines half an inch apart just like I did with the applique blocks. And that's what creates the shadow ovals in this quilt. It adds a whole lot of interest for very little effort. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to quilt shadow play from my Cotton Shot Collective.